Deadwood. All right, we're back in the Kurt News studio at the 2024 Run for a Million with the artist Jackson Dean. Played this venue a few years ago, and the crowd loved you. And, you know, we talked a little bit about the fact that Taylor Sheridan, whether it's actors, artists, or horses, he's got an eye for talent, and he's seen something in you, giving you these opportunities here. What's that meant to your career? I'm very grateful for it, and, I mean, honored to be a part of the score, and, um, I mean, I've been watching him since he was in Sons of Anarchy, you know. Uh, I mean, it's an incredible career to to watch, and I know all that he's doing, all that he's writing right now. And um, it's an incredible opportunity, man. I'm, as someone that loves to see a moment scored well, it's an honor to be a part of, of it. And, um, you know, he gave me my first go-around in that world, and it was something that Kevin Costner was involved in. And I'm such a Costner guy, mm -hmm. you know, and um, no, it, was, it was really a big honor. You said something there that I want to kind of focus in on. He scores a moment so well. Music has that ability to create a moment, and he's figured that out on screen. Talk a little bit about your involvement with that and how you try to make music in a way that affects people emotionally. Um, the way that I look at it, at it is time. You know, it flows one way, uh, and what we do either slows it down or speeds it up. You, you know, it, it can make time go faster, and you can make a moment last. Um, up there on stage, we get to do a bit of both, depending on what song you're playing, you know. But to create a crescendo all the way up to the build, to the pinnacle moment, and, and have it all come crashing back in just hits your heart so hard, and when it's done proper, it's undeniable, you know. It really is. Now, one thing I've noticed, just to draw the comparison, and this may sound like a reach, but hear me out on this. For horse trainers, that's the world I come from, and from artists, I always say, that you don't choose the career, the career chooses you. When did you know this was your destiny? I'm gonna sing, I'm gonna write music, and I'm gonna build people up through that. When did that happen? Um, there, there was no aha moment. It was, it happened over a couple of years and it got to a point where I was like, well, I have a pub deal sitting in front of me and I could go to Nashville and I could write songs or I could stay here and try to find work and, you know, get away from Nicholson Masonry, which me and my siblings worked for our entire lives and, and I worked for until I left. Wow. Um, so, uh, there was no aha moment really. Um, it was just like, well, I'm been gifted an opportunity and have it and have had it presented in front of me i might as well take it so far so good indeed now you got a new album coming up and a new single you're also going to be touring with laney wilson this fall first of all talk about the new album influences where do you want to go with that tell us a little bit about does it have a theme uh how do you feel about this album so the rec the record is named after one song on the record, and it's called Jane, and it's it's really just a witchy little nursery rhyme. It's not very long. Um, it is a vibe, though. All of the songs on that record have a flair of that song within them, um, and that line on the back of my dreams comes from Jane, and I'll I'll let I'll let you listen to it to to feel the to feel the effect of it, but. Um, it was just a dope little line, and I was like, well, we got to name it something. Um, but it's everywhere that I've been since the last record. Um, there are some things on this record that I wish had said to me uh, prior to now, mm -hmm. and some things that uh, definitely needed to come off my chest. Um, and sometimes, you know, up there underneath the light, songs become a penance almost, you know. Uh, it's not just singing a song. you. I, you feel every word that comes out of you and every stroke of the guitar that you make and um it's a lot it's i don't want to say it's a lot to process in one sitting but it, i mean it's it's pretty heavy from an emotional standpoint what means more to you the creation of the music or the performance of the music and how you're able to move people with it but you sound like your process is is important to you and how you arrive at these songs I just want the songs to be in the best form as they possibly can be, which is what I was going to talk about, the perfection of Western program of songwriting. Sure. Um, I mean, national songwriting is 
you have three peaks, you know, uh, you get finite time to make musical fusion and procure emotion out of people. Um, then you have three peaks to do it, you know. These are exceeding that program. First single coming up that you're gonna release. Yes, sir. Um, this song has had quite the journey. Um, I wrote it like three years ago and um, a guy named Benji Davis and a guy named Driver Williams. Driver plays electric for Eric Church and it was the first thing that came out of Driver's mouth as soon as he walked in the door for the right and he goes, heavens to Betsy boy, what do you think of that as a song title? And the first flash and it's, a lot of this record is vignettes making those moments last, mm -hmm. still scoring those moments. Um, the first flash that came into my head as soon as the title came out of his mouth was a daddy sitting on the outskirts of heaven with a CB looking down on his daughter and and he's going heaven to Betsy, I don't know if you can hear me, but up here you're coming in as clear as a bell. And he's just sitting on the edge of, on the, out, on the outside of heaven looking down on her, watching over. And wow. Looking for a redemption in his own way. Um, but I thought of Interstellar uh, as that image stayed in my head. I thought of that scene where he's looking at himself leaving and he's just screaming and nobody can, it's heartbreaking. Yeah. It's heartbreaking. But um, but yeah, man, I've just watched that watched that situation play out too many times uh, in my life. And it was, it, it is worth, the painting is worth the words that it takes. And the music that we put to it is all that the man died with and all that was left unsaid. Wow. That's incredible. I know you got to go. I promised I wouldn't keep you, but I do have to ask you, if you could name two or three for you, musical influences, somebody you've aspired to or somebody you've thought, if I could communicate in that way through my music, that'd be something really noble. Anybody come to mind for you? Coming up, you know, my first concert was Whiskey Myers. Nice. It was Goodbye June. It was a little four-piece rock band, awesome band, and they opened up for Goodbye June, and we just sold out the venue that I sold that I saw them in just right. this past year. Um, Myers, another one that's right up there with him is Bingham, Ryan Bingham. Ryan Bingham, um, sure. Incredible, incredible music and musicians, mm -hmm. and just overall badass, you know. Um, but vocally. The top two for me have got to be Cornell and, and Plant, uh, Chris Cornell and Robert Plant, uh, in terms of vocal ability and laser beaming that stuff. Yeah, Chris Cornell, it's so sad that we lost him because in any situation you put him in, that vocal talent that he had just shone through. He could open a vortex with his vocal cords, mm -hmm. like into another dimension. It's, huh. it's insane. It's insane. But that level of what I'm aspiring for. I hope you get there. If you folks haven't seen this guy yet, you're gonna to wanna to join us tonight. Should be a great show. And another one of the things that makes the run for a million, it's not a horse show, folks. This is a festival and we are so thrilled to have Jackson Dean here to join us for it. He had something to it before. He's gonna do it again this year. Thanks so much for stopping by. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely.